So right there at the hour. There we are. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to this Facebook Live with College of Vedic Studies. My name's Prajumna Das. I'm the president at uh, ISKCON Leicester. And today we have a conversation exploring the theme of what does it take to be serious in spiritual life? And we have a very special guest um, that's going to help us give some insights to this theme. Uh, welcome, uh, His Holiness Chandra Moli Maharaj. Thank you for giving your time to be here with this. I'll just, for those of you who are meeting Maharaj for the first time, just a few words to introduce Maharaj. Maharaj is a disciple of his divine grace, uh, Srila A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami, Srila Prabhupada, the founder and uh, spiritual master of ISKCON. And Maharaj's spiritual life goes back almost 50 years, back to the early 70s when he became a disciple of uh, Srila Prabhupada. But um, having known Maharaj for many, many years, one of the things that really admires me, uh, that I admire in Maharaj, is his service of supporting inmates and through the work that you do, Maharaj, of the prison service, which you now head up and oversee. And I was reading that you've captured a lot of these insights in your book, The Holy Jail. So maybe we can have you back on again at some time in the future to just get into that, because when as I was reading about it, it was just very fascinating about the work that you're doing, the connections that you're making, the rehab that you're offering. So that's very, very fascinating uh, to, to, to hear about. So let's see how we get on. If we have time, maybe we can touch on that. Um, but definitely would like to have you back to speak specifically about what you talk about in the book and the service that you do. Um, Maharaj is currently based in Croatia and connects with devotees all over the world, kind of really inspiring them and supporting them in this theme of being serious in uh, spiritual life. So Maharaj, thank you again for, for being with us. Uh, we have many people who have posted some insights and some questions um, that they want to put before you uh, in the next hour. But if I can begin by just reflecting on this phrase, what does it mean for you, uh, this idea of being serious in spiritual life? Well, in anything you do, if you want to be successful in it, you have to be serious about it. <laughs> That's a broad topic that works both within all realms of activity. If a person is trying to be a doctor, then they have to be they have to focus and they have to do whatever is required and make that personal effort to succeed. So I, we can use that as an example, but in spiritual life especially, because spiritual life is more subtle than all of the gross activities. So that seriousness really means uh, getting an understanding of what spiritual life is and what is the goal of spiritual life. And one of the benefits that one uh, achieves by practicing devotional service in a serious way. Mm. So there's some very interesting words you use there, Marge, in that response. You use the word focus you use the word knowing what's required and having an understanding of that. You also use the word goal, which I want to explore because there's a couple of insights and questions related to goals. And then you also said you use the word benefits. So maybe we can explore some of these uh, words um, uh, in understanding what it means to be, uh, be, be serious. But let's go to the phrase spiritual life. Um, in, in a very succinct way, how do we how do we define that? And if you could just give us some understanding, what is it that we're pursuing when we talk about spiritual life? Well, I'll just refer back to the principle that life is spiritual. <laughs> material is just an extension of our existence in the material world. But everything that is alive is spiritual. And everything that is not alive is material. So life is spiritual. So how to awaken one's spiritual existence and bring it to life is the process of devotional service. And in order to do that, one has to have the understanding of what is needed to awaken one's spiritual life. And that comes through knowledge. Knowledge comes through the spiritual master, and that knowledge 
through through Krishna's words, through the words of the spiritual master, through the books of the spiritual master. It mm -hmm. gives us an understanding of what we're doing and why we're doing what we're doing and what, what, what is the goal of what we're doing. So spiritual means to be alive. So we are spiritual in essence. Now, sometimes practitioners of devotional life, of, of bhakti and so on, we kind of get hung up about spiritual and material. Sometimes we have people will say, I've now got to take care of my material life because if I don't, then things fall apart. If I don't get to work, if I don't clean the house, if I don't sort out the material things, uh, and then I'll find time for my spiritual life. Maybe I'll do it in the, a bit in the morning, a bit in the evening. Um, so a question that came up is, is it healthy to have this split of here's my material life, here's my spiritual life, or as you say, should we see it everything is spiritual and there are bits and pieces of it that make up the entire show when we have when we're when we make our goal in life is to become what we say krishna conscious or uh connected to krishna then whatever we do fits into that category and then material seems to more or less amalgamate itself with all of the activities that we do. And then, then, then they all become spiritual in one sense. In one sense, they, this is called, um, it's parallel to the essential activities of devotional service, but it's supportive. Supportive in the sense that it's necessary. As uh, you mentioned that in your conjecture that if I don't take care of my um, my material side of my life, then things will fall apart. So that's also needed in order to balance or to give support to our spiritual activities. Hmm. Especially mm -hmm. if we live, particularly not particularly if we live within the family, and we're practicing within the family. Nice. I, I I like that a lot, Maharaj, where you say you kind of see our connection with Krishna is spiritual and so therefore everything related and connected to that activity of of engaging with krishna is also spiritual so being a father being a husband being a colleague at work in some company that can also be spiritualized yeah because our goal is spiritual if our goal is not spiritual then these activities will simply take us away our goal is to become krishna conscious our goal is to connect with krishna when keeping that in mind, then whatever we do should support that goal. And that, that, that makes that, those activities spiritual in a supportive way. Mm. Thank you, Marge. I mean, that, that is very insightful, and I, and I, and I like that a lot. And um, if, there are, if whoever's, whoever's tuned in and, and, and watching, and if you want to expand on this point or have a particular question related to this, because I know in speaking to devotees, this becomes a hang up, you know, oh, I, I'm, I'm engrossed materially and I want to do spiritual, but kind of having the vision of this is all spiritual because I'm connecting with Krishna, then it makes yeah. it easier to connect even those aspects that are, that are very, very difficult as well. So let's see yeah. if anyone has any particular uh, insight or additional question to that and we'll put it to Maharaj. Sorry, Maharaj, you wanted to come in with. Uh, yeah, point. but then we have what is called sadhana. And that we have to establish as the basis for everything we do, both material and spiritual. And that sadhana is hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord, uh, taking the opportunity to associate with devotees and also with the activities of hearing and chanting. Mm -hmm. And for mm -hmm. grihastas, many of us are also worshiping the Lord at home in his deity form. So that is also part of our Sadhana. Sadhana means the basis of spiritual growth through prescribed spiritual activities. Okay. Which is, which is hearing, chanting, and serving. Basically, is those three things. Mm -hmm. So let's let's let, let's look at sadhana and some of the aspects of how we become serious in our sadhana. So sometimes um, a question arises that I'm. I'm doing all the external bits, you know, I'm, 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 I'm getting up, I'm, I'm picking up my beads and I'm, and I'm going through the beads the number of times that I've said I would in, in a day. 
But how do I take it beyond that? I mean, at what point does that seriousness manifest that I'm I'm doing this, I'm doing it every day, but I don't feel any different um, with, with my daily uh, behavior or practice with this aspect of my sadhana. So what needs to change then to introduce that, not only that seriousness externally, but that seriousness internally with that practice? Well, that's putting quality in these activities. Um, we can go through the activity and the mind can be somewhere else or get distracted just because it, that's the nature of the mind is to get distracted. Um, or we can understand, try to put some quality in it. In other words, if I'm hearing and chanting, let me uh, create an environment where we can maximize the quality of our hearing and chanting. And if we do that, we'll find in a very short period of time, there'll be a qualitative difference in our consciousness. Um, if our spiritual activities just become one of the many activities we performed hmm. throughout the day, then it won't develop. Why? It's like when you want to build a house, the most important part of building the house and the design that will come as the house is the foundation. So the foundation is our hearing and chanting and taking opportunities to engage in practical devotional activities, service. Okay. So we have to put our attention, complete attention, and try to qualitize that in such a way that we do it in the best possible way. You know, and, if we should put, putting quality in whatever we do will help to develop the taste and the sweetness that comes with, you know, with the practice of sadhana. And quality comes with giving attention, you mentioned. That, yeah, and the seriousness that comes with the effort, that, that is also a force that helps develop quality. This is the most important part of my day. Right, okay. So that's a, I like that as an affirmation that this is the most important part of my day. So I'm going to put, put aside all the things that are not important right now. And, and how important, uh, I mean, I don't know if you, if, you, if you do affirmations as part of your sadhana, um, but, but do you want to just shed a little light on the value of those kinds of affirmations that allow us to enter that our sadhana practice? Yeah, these affirmations are actually ways to uh, realize what we're trying to accomplish. Hmm. An aff affirmation kicks out or dispenses with all forms of negativity that may have happened in the past or may be there in the mind because of an experience. We simply focus on the success of the activity before the activity. In other words, I'll give you an example. Um, this is one affirmation that was we found in the book on affirmations and chanting. So mm -hmm. when we approach the holy, when we approach the holy name, we, th we might be thinking, "Well, wow, it's like you know, this struggle. It's been a, it's a big struggle. So I have to go through this struggle again. And my mind is so restless. Mm. So we start thinking in terms of what we have been, happened in the past and the negativity that comes by that experience. I didn't get much out of it. And it was a struggle. Um, so many, whatever apparent problems came up. Dispense with all that and give the affirmation. This is one I like. It's, it's, it's very simple, right to the point, only six words. Uh, it's nine words. Now. Okay. I get to chant. I want to chant. I love to chant. So you're telling yourself, hey, it's a privilege for me to chant. Not only that, I look forward to it. I want it. And not only that, it's wonderful. I love it. That's so you really set nice. The mind, you set the mind in a positive direction. Yeah, and, I, and, and, and just for everybody who's tuned in here, um, maybe you can say this along with me. I'm just going to repeat it back. Thank you, Maharaj, for sharing this. I want to chant. I Let me begin again. I get to chant. I want to chant. And I love to chant. So yeah. if everybody yeah. who's listening, yeah. if you want to make a note of that, this is Maharaj is sharing this positive affirmation. 
and something we can say ahead of our chanting on a daily basis. I get to chant. I mean, that's a privilege. I'm about to connect with Krishna's holy name. I want to chant. I want to have this connection. And I love to chant. So I've gone deeper in my quality and expression and my and and and, and my um, uh, connection with uh, with the holy name. Um, well, thank you so part, much for sharing that. In the part of I want to chant, that means there's nothing else right in the now that I want to do except chant right now. I don't want to. I don't want to pick up the messages on my phone that are coming in. I don't want to go back over the situations I was dealing with yesterday and try to solve them today. I want to simply focus on chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. Nice. Um, and that, there's that a question leads, around. Sorry, go leads, ahead, Maharaj. Yeah, that leads to the essential principle that you first brought up. Going deeper into our spiritual life means to really focus on the activities. <laughs> right, right. Um, a question on routine. How important is routine when we're trying to build on quality and connection with Krishna? I, 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 I assume you're talking about a daily routine, of a, like a schedule that we follow? Yes. So, you know, d d should I do something at the same time every day? Am I, am, am, I, am I doing things at the time that's right for me in the day? And that may vary. Um, so what should I work on there um, in, 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 in terms of a routine? Should it be fixed? Well, it should be fixed but flexible. <laughs> okay. In other words, fixed in the sense that I have a, I have a routine to work with. I pretty know I pretty much know what I'm going to do, and uh, I guess for those living in the material atmosphere, in other words, in family life with occupation, the best thing to do is the night before the next day is write down your next day's schedule mm. and do it instead of doing it a, a, like a law or like a like I'm going to do something for the next year like this, just do it day by day. Mm. And because uh, there will be variables, just that's the way life is. There's always things that come up, and you have to allow for that. But when it comes to the sadhana part, that should be pretty much in the routine. Right. Okay. So that's another great technique of looking at how we prioritize the things we need to do the following day and schedule those. Um, that's 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 a great technique, Marge. Thank you for. Uh, thank that's, you how that's how corporate. That's how corporations say. Yes, so. that's how yes. They, they work that like, that way. Yeah. And people spend thousands of pounds going on time management programs, but it's a very simple tool mm -hmm. to kind of schedule things in for yourself the next day. Yeah, and leave your leave yourself the option that if something comes up, then you also have that time to deal with that. Yeah, yeah, nice, Marge. There's a question around failure. Um, I'm working on certain parts of my spiritual life, but there are other parts of my spiritual life that I, I would say, the person asking the question is saying that I'm failing in. And sometimes that leaves some ill feeling to myself. I feel kind of low about that idea. And how do I, how do I deal with that sense of failing? So I can make progress and not fail at something and continue making an et attempt. Mm. But that's, um, that's, if I'm failing in one area, how do I protect myself from the other areas that are working well? Hmm. Well, you know, I would question what is the terminology of failure, how it implies itself. Uh, in the process of devotional service, you can't fail. There's no such, there's no room for failure. <laughs> failure means to give up. <laughs> All right. Okay. So that's uh, very. But, I mean, that's a very reassuring statement in itself. And 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 um, as you said that, I I I thought of a verse from. Uh, th there's no loss or diminution. So I guess you're referring to that verse. But in the question from the person, they're referring to something that just that's just not clicking for them 
and and usually it's around i mean we have rules and regulations that we follow and you know no we don't we don't eat meat fish or eggs we don't gamble with illicit sex and intoxication but because we've had association with some of these activities in spiritual life we may still hold on to that attachment and association and that may kind of bring me down or i may go back to some of those activities and i get a sense of failure that's mm. that's the crux well, of that question yeah there is a principle of devotional service that called weakness of heart when one knows something is not favorable or against devotional service but they can't give it up because of attachment yeah that requires that requires association and strong association in order to somehow or other find the uh, get the strength, the spiritual strength, to somehow overcome that. That's what it takes. And usually it, right. it takes association. Usually when we're struggling by ourselves or within a limited uh, atmosphere, we might continue just to struggle. So seeking out senior association mm -hmm. and performing the activities of devotional service in that, ad, in that association really is a very um, direct and very effective way to overcome our uh, so-called failures mm -hmm. or inability to move forward. Uh, I've seen it so many times that simply by the right association, everything changes. Yeah. So let me just reposition that uh, to the person who's listening and who asked the question. Um, you 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 went away from the word failure because there can't be failure in spiritual life there's always you make a bit of progress and you continue from where you leave off but you use the word weakness of heart with two very different things um and that weakness of heart can be strengthened by being with people who are strong in their spiritual practice which you called yeah association yeah. We can hear from them that's one form of the association while we can have the direct uh direct presence of such persons both of them will be effective but regularly hearing from them also will will enter into the the mind and give us a clear understanding maybe we're not approaching the situation in the mm -hmm. most of most effective way mm, okay but look at it from a different angle the mind has a tendency to put to bring things in a more of a narrow way because we, we think in a certain way Using that thought pattern causes us to act and react within that, that spectrum or that narrow spectrum. When we hear from others and we also see the examples of others, we can broaden our perspective and see there are maybe other opportunities or ways to overcome this problem I have that I haven't seen. And a lot of that, right. that comes from association again. Here. Right. So finding out those people who are strong and serious in their spiritual life, hanging out with them, having conversations with them, learning from them is a key part of that affecting us in a positive uh, way. Um, yeah, if, you, if you're open to learn, then you'll learn. <laughs> no and that's, that's, that's a qualification in itself. I have to be open to learn and then I'll be able to listen from those who are senior and uh, more serious practitioners uh, than myself. And we may also present this in the form of a question to persons and get to yes. get correct, you know, yeah. correct understanding. Yeah, yeah. But sometimes in association, it, um, the, the, it, it requires for us to be a little vulnerable and reveal ourselves. Um, so how do, we, how do we get the strength that, to be honest in association that... Um, Hey, hey, listen, I have a difficulty here um, and a weakness. It, it, well, it takes a lot of courage to do that. Yeah. Why are we coming into association? One of the one of the reasons to come into association is to find the opportunity to serve in that association. In that mm -hmm. mode of service, we, we can also learn simply by that. The servant, there's a, there's a story, and it's a little story in the life of Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati, where he was mm -hmm. visited by one political person who was also had come to meet Bhakti Siddhanta many times. 
and he was very attracted to the spiritual life. So he came to meet Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati, and then he went right to him and offered his respect and said, Maharaj, I have some questions. You have some time. Hmm. Maharaj said, unfortunately, I cannot give you the time now, but you can go to the Pujaris and you can ask your questions to them. They'll help you. So he had faith in Maharaj's word, so he left and went to the Pujaris. He told them why he came. He had some questions sent by Guru Maharaj. He said, well, we're, we're polishing the brass and silver right now. And we have a lot of work to do. So why don't you help us? When we're, when we're done, we'll answer all your questions. So he thought, oh, that's nice. So he sat down and started polishing the brass and silver. Went on for some time. Finally, it was done. The Jari's turned to him and, OK, what is the questions? And they, he said, actually, I have no questions. Thank you very much. <laughs> and he left. <laughs> and then while he was walking out, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati noticed him and asked him, did the Pujaris answer your questions? Oh, yes, Maharaj. <laughs> so he got all the answers simply by by performing the service. service. Just by doing that service. Yeah. Yeah. That's, so that is a lot of times, yeah. So we usually talk about the seriousness of sadhana and spiritual life as, as that internal aspect. But in that story that you've just shared, um, it, it, it kind of brings up another aspect of being serious in spiritual life. And that is the physical and the external aspect of being active. You know, the person was active in polishing and the paraphernalia and, and that created a realization. Um, do you want to give a bit more insight on how we should look for that opportunity to be active and use our limbs and talent and so on in something that is connected to Krishna, because that also brings that internal transformation. Well, we can be in the mood of enjoying or we can be in the mood of serving. Hmm. And if we're in the mood of serving, we'll gain so much and learn so much. And we'll also be able to please others. If we're in the mood of enjoying, then we have, sometimes we make mistakes or we actually miss the opportunity. So that is one of the things that requires some practice to always be, in whatever atmosphere we find ourselves in, be in the mood of service. Sometimes service takes, its, takes the part of accepting service. Right. Sometimes we have to accept yes. service in order to give service. But yes. that, that is understood by the situation. The situation will dictate accordingly. But if we have that mood, like, how can I serve in this situation? We'll always find the opportunity to grow in that. It's our nature, is to serve. Mm -hmm. Serve Krishna and serve his devotees. And sometimes we serve people in general. Thank you, Marsh. Um, another question in, in with regards to being serious is the question of faith um, and, and, and increasing faith. Does that naturally increase being serious? Um, and how do I define faith in my connection with Krishna in my practice of Krishna consciousness? Well, as the Prabhupada would say, faith is the, the principle that carries you all the way through from the basic beginnings of Krishna consciousness all the way up to the highest stage of pure love of God. Faith gets strengthened as one makes advancement in devotional service. Faith comes by associating with persons who have faith. Faith also comes by understanding the philosophical precepts or teachings that are the foundations for our execution of devotional service, along with learning mm -hmm. about Krishna. Yeah. Also, all that will increase faith. What destroys faith is wrong association. Mm -hmm. So again, we come back to the principle of association, being with people who are strong practitioners of, of yeah. Krishna consciousness. Yeah, Lord Chaitanya, when he was asked by Sanatana Goswami, what is the first principle in the execution of devotional service? He said, Asa Sangha Tiaga e Vaishnava Achar, to take the association of devotees and to give up the association of the materialistic. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. So people get confused with that. Well, I have a job. I have to interact with the X X out outside world. Yeah. Association, association means affection for, not simply physical proximity. Right. So, if I would use the example of flea could sit on a king, but what's the connection between the flea and the king? There's no thing. So we can be in the environment of other people and not associate with them. <coughs> when you open up your heart and you open up your mind, that is the association. Mm. So we do that with devotees and with the general population, we do our business. Okay. We become friendly, but we just we do our business. We don't get into involved with the materialistic subject matters, or the people are so interested in. Yeah. Uh, you know, so we can we can it, so on a worldly basis, um, it, it's perfectly fine to be friends and to be friendly, but we're not being consumed by the conversation of uh, or drawn into uh, things yeah. that take us away from Krishna. Yeah, being affectionate is where where the where where you walk into the into the other association. Okay, um, I, I want to. There's there's a question related to a couple of stories in Srimad Bhagavatam, uh, and Srimad Bhagavatam has many examples of practitioners, devotees of Krishna who are serious, and we learn a lot from those various stories. So there's. So there's one story of a Jamil who wasn't serious at all in his spiritual life, but at the end of his life, uh, he was on his deathbed and he called out the name of Narayan, the name of God. It happened to be the name of his youngest son that he was affectionate to. And just by calling out that name of Krishna without serious practice at all in his life, he he was given an amazing opportunity to uh, start again and have a second chance and um, redevelop his uh, spiritual life. But then we hear a story of someone who's been very serious in their practice, like Bharat Maharaj, who was very serious, very meticulous in his devotion, in his practice, in his sadhana. Um, but then he became just at that time of, of his departure from this body, um, moment of death, he was, he was cultivating this affection for a deer. He thought of the deer, but he got the body of a deer. He had to experience the life of a deer uh, beyond that moment of death. So someone might look at those two stories and say, well, what was the use of that seriousness of Ma Bharat Maharaj when just for that slight affection for the deer, he became a deer. But this chap over here, the Ajamil, he was just a debauchee. He did not have any serious practice at all. But for a few names of God at the, on his deathbed, he he got an amazing life and an opportunity. Um, how do we understand those in the context of our <laughs> conversation today? Yeah, there's a number of ways to respond to that. One, we can see the glory because the glories of the, the pastime of Ajamil illustrates the, the power of the chanting of the Lord's holy name and how it wiped away all the reactions of all sinful activities simply because he called out the name of Narayan in a helpless manner. There was no pretense in his chanting. He was simply calling the name of... When he called the name of... Narayan, he was also calling for his son. But Prabhupada mentions in one lecture that when he heard himself calling the name of Narayan, he remembered the Supreme Lord for a fraction of a second. He actually <laughs> remembered Narayan himself. And that wiped away everything. Um, so that was the special mercy of the chanting of the Holy Name. That's why that's that particular path gave a lot of importance in the Bhagavatam to show mm. the glories of chanting of the holy name. Okay. Um, for Bart Maharaj, um, the problem with Bart is that he was all alone in the forest 
and he actually had given up his spiritual practice and took to just focusing on taking care of this deer. He no longer, he was neglecting everything that he had previously done in devotional service just to take care of the deer. But because he was, he was on the platform of uh, Baba, he was just below yeah. Prema. And, uh, but it was interesting because when he got the body of a deer, he remembered his past mm -hmm. life. Mm -hmm. And he didn't associate with other deers. He simply went around hearing from great souls in his deer body. And then after that, he came back for one more life in a pretty much a self-realized, he was a self-realized soul, but somewhat of an avaduta. Mm -hmm. self right. He followed no, no rules and regulations. Um, I think in the, in the past time of Bart Maharaj teaches us uh, a couple of things. One, uh, how valuable it is to have association with devotees. And without that, one can somehow or other slip in yeah. one's system of values and starts developing the affection for something material. I mean, he had a soft heart because mm -hmm. he was feel, feeling for the... Um, suffering of this baby deer who had no one of the mother but that soft heart was misplaced it wasn't wrong that he showed attachment for the affection for the deer it was wrong that he gave up his spiritual practice in order to do that okay so that's that's a valuable insight in the story that he actually gave up his practice uh because of the distraction of affection for the deer Right, um, which then led to him thinking about the deer at the time of death and assuming that yeah. body. Uh, but with Ajamil, then, uh, though he wasn't serious at all in his spiritual life, chanting the name of God at that moment of death actually offered him great, li offered him liberation, pretty much, or offered him mm. the opportunity of being washed away from his uh, materialistic. Uh, activities and the reactions of those activities yeah. so they're not very so they're not comparable from that point of view because each one of them did something very specific one to liberate and one to become distracted yeah both were glorious and both yeah. ultimately both ultimately attain perfection when you look at it yeah yeah thank you Maharaj um there's a question on sincerity and that's another word that usually comes up when devotees are trying to understand, am I making progress? How do I know? Uh, so the question is, how do we become more sincere in devotional service? And what are the what are the checks? How do I know? What kind of checks should I do on myself to get a sense? Yeah, I am sincere. Or oh, this was a sincere attempt, a sincere endeavor. How do we how do we look at that in in, in the context of being serious. It's hmm. interesting. Well, <laughs> again, I think it comes back to association. Associating you know, senior associates, it's, it's highly recommended that devotees take association. Mm -hmm. It's even more recommended that we take association from those who, who we can serve and gain, gain spiritual uh, realizations or knowledge from um, association makes one happy association purifies one from one's attachments association gives one an opportunity for for service and no association gets great opportunity to learn so many things that we can use in our devotional life we learn from other devotees mm -hmm. which we may also apply in our Krishna consciousness yeah. Um, so again, I would think uh, that sincerity is what we say fomented or uh, solidified more and more by association. So, is within association, is it an appropriate question to put to put to my senior or, or my friend? Um, do you see sincerity in me? Am, am I? Do you think I'm sincere? Uh, because there's always self-doubt and, you know, uh, did I do it for the right motivation and so on? So 
would that be a right kind of question in a in association or am um, I just I've seen for... I've seen that done in an exercise one time one senior devotee was I used that as an exercise and broke up into groups and one of the questions we were supposed to ask is uh, what what is it about me that I can what you can see that I can improve on in my devotional life <laughs> wow that's a great question <laughs> I mean, not everybody was up to the experiment. <laughs> but, wow. you know, you I guess you have to be ready for the answer. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, there should be a sensitivity in giving the answer, but I think at the same time, uh, it's, it's helpful. Yeah. It's helpful. Yeah. But I guess that takes a little maturity in the relationship of the association to, to, to get to the point of that question. What, what can I do? What do you see that I can do? Uh, That's one move. step further in the association, but generally, the association is like a mirror. You can you you can start you start reflecting on your own qualities or your own shortcomings in that association. You can start to see them as you interact with others. It's that's a great easy. that that's a great insight there, Maharaj. That when we're with others, um, it's like a mirror that allows me to see my own self in the context of others okay how we deal so if with I, others if i learn. was to do that then one of the things that comes up in association and i like the idea of the mirror so it reflects where i'm at and reflects maybe some of my qualities or things i need to work on um but how about if i then use that and then i just begin to compare myself with others and feel i'm not up to the mark of everybody around me and um and, and it discourages me rather than encourages me if I begin to then compare. No, that, you, you want to avoid that comparative type of attitude. So what, what are you going to use for the basis of your comparison? <laughs> <laughs> um, I think we should be... Well, people, people, people um, know more than I do. People are happier than I am. And, you know, I, I begin to compare those things. That's a sense of jealousy. Okay. It's not necessarily envy. Envy means I'm, I'm more or less focused outward about something I want to get that someone has. Jealousy is something I feel bad about, something about myself that I don't have. Right. Okay. And so... Uh, that just relegates one to a, a, a narrow-minded activity. If if you feel like you should work on something, then work on it. But, you know, okay. because Krishna consciousness is so powerful that whatever you focus on, if you seriously focus on it, you can develop. I yeah. want to preach? Okay. Read more and study the books and you'll be able to preach. No question about that. Yeah. Yeah. So that can become... I like what you said about the jealousy, which is something that I'm not happy about in myself. And, and that can become a, a self-pity, self-wallow, and it doesn't really go anywhere. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's about transforming that into getting on with doing and, and doing something positive and practical to overcome any particular weakness or challenge that I may have. Krishna has given everyone something and everyone can see that within themselves. You know, use that, develop it, and perfect it in Krishna consciousness. Yeah, yeah. Okay. We have one question in the chat here by Kirti, uh, Kirti Gosai. How can we become spiritually mature? Mm -hmm. Mature? Hmm. Well, I'm not sure I understand the, the connotation of the word mature. Mature Security, if you want to expand on um, just a note to Kirti, if you want to expand on your question there just to uh, what do you mean by mature and uh, we can put that to Maharaj here but go ahead Maharaj just you were reflecting on that uh, I guess mature means uh, I know exactly what I'm supposed to do at all different times <laughs> that's maturity Okay. I know how to, you know. I know. I know how to act, and I know what to do. Yeah. 
and that's a uh, that's a great definition so um so it's not a question then based on that definition it's not about becoming spiritually mature it's kind of a manifestation of progress would you say um i guess the with a sense of maturity means there's a sense of surety that comes with that whereas i don't get confused by situations i don't get bewildered i don't yeah in other words maturity also comes through experience it's not some, something that you can just adopt you know it comes through so maybe even years of practice in, in devotional service learning how to execute Krishna consciousness in different uh, atmospheres with different people in different situations. Can I become Krishna conscious when I'm in my workplace? Can I become Krishna conscious when I'm home? Can I become Krishna conscious in the temple? All of these yeah. require experience. Okay, thank you. Thank you for that insight. So going through the variety of experiences that life brings us and remaining and sustaining our Krishna consciousness through those experiences is and, a manifestation and how, of maturity. And how, and how that's done is called Shastra Chakshush. That's called seeing through the eye of knowledge. Okay. Yes. Seeing through the eyes of knowledge. Thank you. Not, Good, seeing, I hope simply, that... not simply seeing through what we experience, but seeing through Shastra, seeing, seeing through Guru, like that. Okay, thank you, Maharaj. And Kirti, I hope that answers uh, the question that you had there. If you want to ex expand on your insight on mature, and we can put that to Maharaj. If there are any other questions, uh, we have about 10 minutes left on today's Facebook Live College of Vedic Studies, Leicester. We have Chandramoli Maharaj with us. We've had a, an awesome conversation so far. Thank you so much, Maharaj, um, for these beautiful insights. We've spoken about affirmations. Uh, the theme of association has been a constant one throughout uh, our conversation here. So thank you very much for those insights. I have another question uh, from industry. If we feel some sort of ignorance, which making myself feeling down, how could I make myself strong to continue that association? Kindly help me. Thank you, uh, industry. I, I... I'm feeling some ignorance in a particular situation. It's bringing me down. Um, and what is the ending words there? I, 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 uh, how could I make myself strong to continue uh, that association? Um, <laughs> well, <laughs> I guess that may also take some experience. On how how to rectify that situation? Um, I would <laughs> I give you a simple answer. I just chant Hare Krishna. <laughs> I just chant the holy names, and you you're in the best situation you could possibly be. <laughs> mm. So come what is, may, I, you know, so come ignorance. what may, whether we're ignorance or whether we're positive or whatever, that that the the, the basis of our day, our life is calling out the names of Krishna because that always takes yeah. us in the right place. Yeah, even if even if you don't come to enlightened knowledge, at least you're protected by the holy name. <laughs> yeah, from falling falling into ignorance. Yeah, and that's powerful to to remain protected by chanting the names of Krishna. Yeah. I know there's a there's a lovely quote by. Srila Prabhupada, that if we finish our prescribed rounds every day, then Krishna uh, reassures us of um, his protection. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that by fulfilling the order of the spiritual master, we're automatically protected from the uh, effects of the material energy. Nice. Thank you. Industry, I hope that helps the question that you've asked. If you want to kind of expand on that, then just please go ahead. Uh, put it in the chat and we can um, uh, we can put that to Marge. We still have a few more uh, minutes um, with Marge on this theme of becoming serious in spiritual uh, life. Let's just check. I'm just checking to see um, if anything else has come up as a question. 
Or if there's anything else, Marge, that you would advise practitioners, maybe let's 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 go to practitioners who have been at it for many, many years and looking for their next step to deepen uh, their connection with Krishna. Um, what would what would you what would you advise them, people who know? <laughs> Nice question. I'm ready for the answer. Uh, chant your rounds early. <laughs> okay. So getting, words, uh, so getting up earlier in the day as we progress through in order to... Try, try to finish your 16 rounds if that's your requirement or whatever required rounds you are chanting before you, before you begin your day's activities. In other okay. words, before, you know, by breakfast time, you should try to get your rounds finished. You'll see there's a qualitative difference in your Krishna consciousness. If you do that continuously for some, a period of time, you'll see the difference in how you deal with anything, everything and how you actually start to feel the mercy of Krishna coming stronger and stronger. Early rounds have a special, special effect as opposed to chanting throughout the day and just putting it in when we have time. Nice. So, Marge, you've given you've given us a bit of a, 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 a um, an experiment there to try out, um, especially for those of us who have been at this for a while, number of years. So, the experiment that Maharaj has just um, shared is try to get our chanting of Hare Krishna, our rounds, our prescribed number of rounds earlier in the day before we begin our other activities of the day. And Maharaj's reassurance is that we will experience. Um, something very very different so let's go to yeah. we have some we have devotees who are viewing today who are new to krishna consciousness they've they've come through our courses they are picking up the idea that krishna consciousness is very valuable and they really want to make a go of it so what would your advice be to those who are starting off on this journey well hear about krishna hear about the philosophy as much as possible and that's how we all came into Krishna consciousness. We were eager to learn, and that learning came from hearing the lectures, hearing in the forms of reading the books. So these two things, and then, of course, uh, take opportunities to go to programs, to the temple, to, you know, sangha programs, or mm -hmm. the Viksha program. In other words, association and... Uh, Try to learn. It's a learn. Papa said we come to devotional service to learn. And what is that learning? We learn who we are. Mm. We learn we are not this particular body, but we learn that we are part and parcel of Krishna. And that relationship is always there, no matter whether we are aware of it or not. Try to awaken that relationship of our realization of Krishna through mm. learning. Keep the philosophy is the basis of everything we do and the Lovely. knowledge which well, the knowledge which pushes us in us in, in the right direction lovely thank you marge so keep learning keep studying keep reading keep connecting with others who are also learning and we learn together in in yeah. this journey of krishna consciousness yeah, yeah. thank you so much marge we have a um a couple of minutes left um, is there anything else you'd like to say to conclude today's theme on being serious in spiritual life? Um, I, guess if, I guess it follows up from the previous question. Is I would just emphasize the importance of reading and studying Srila Prabhupada's books. Yeah. Because uh, Prabhupada put everything that we need to know and more in those books particular Srimad Bhagavatam, Chaitanya Charitamrita, Bhagavad Gita, yeah. those books. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it, it, we're getting spiritual growth through spiritual education and through spiritual activity. Mm. But the education okay. itself is a feature of devotion. Transcendental knowledge is a principle of devotion to Krishna also. Mm. Okay. Thank you, Marge. There's two questions that have come in. One from Kevil. What do you advise if you have health issues, which physically and emotionally keeps you from, refrains you from further association and spiritual activities? 
do you just accept that whilst you're under these constraints you just try your best and not to put too much pressure on yourself yeah sometimes uh, when you ha when you're in that situation you have low energy your energy is not normal and you struggle mm -hmm. do the you, ch you might even struggle to chant um i mean there's no material uh, obstacle to become Krishna consciousness, you may just have to adjust your lifestyle, yeah. which allows you to regain your health. That you should be trying to do, whatever you can do to regain your health. And yeah. whatever, whatever devotional activities you can perform within that period and do them to the best of your ability. Don't put yourself down because you're not up to the standard. You just have to live. Understand, I'm limited because of this situation, and yeah, I have to work with it. And and I think it's important the point you make about working on trying to regain your health and not just letting it slip away or neglecting that, because that's also um, it's an our health is an important vehicle in our practice. Sheila Prabhupada would sign all his letter. Uh, hoping this meets you in the best of health, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami. Right. In every letter he would say that. He encouraged the devotees actively to take care of them. So that's important in, both in execution of devotional service and in order to, you know, be able to, yeah, it's important that we take care of our health. Right. Nice. Nice point. Thank you, Maharaj. Kevil, I hope... Uh, that helps um, work to regain health. Don't bring yourself down because of some of those constraints and just kind of do your best. Um, Jay has right. a question about pilgrimage, um, how pilgrimage serves one in becoming serious in spiritual life and growing in spiritual life. Um, so in terms of going to holy places, places of pilgrimage in India, how do we prepare for those um, those pilgrimages hmm. <laughs> preparing means to be eager because you know, these holy places are actually places of pastimes of the Lord which are non different than the Lord it's one of the ways to serve the Lord it's called serving the lotus feet yeah. mm -hmm. visiting holy places is serving the lotus feet so you're actually executing one of the angas or limbs of bhakti by going to holy places and as Prabhupada mentions going to holy places means to associate and hear from holy people who are personifications of these holy places those who live in the holy places who can speak about the holy places like that so yeah they're non different than Krishna or Lord Chaitanya and Lord Chaitanya also recommended that devotees go to holy places as a regular feature in, in devotional service. Prabhupada also told us that we should visit every year the Mayapur festival during the Korpanima time for at least eight days, he said. <laughs> he actually made a number. <laughs> and, uh, you know, associate with devotees, that gives a real uh, boost to our spiritual life. Yeah. Uh, holy places are very powerful. Simply by being there, we gain spiritual growth. In other words, we can feel the atmosphere. The atmosphere lifts us up. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you very much, Marish. Um I think being with you here on this platform has certainly been a very holy experience a pilgrimage type of experience of just sitting with you and asking these very important, valuable questions and your invaluable insight and, and, and guidance and support with the things that you've shared and the, the insights that you've given really um, indebted to your time today. I hope everybody who's uh, been watching and tuned in has found this um, Maharaj's insights very valuable. Uh, we spoke about affirmation. There was a core theme around association and, and 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 really nurturing that association and engaging in service within that association rising early to chant the holy names of krishna 
and uh, studying, learning, and having that spiritual education as a theme all the way through. So thank you so much, Marge, for these wonderful insights. Um, and for everybody watching, please look out for other events that the College of Vedic Studies Leicester will be putting on for the uh, for, for, for you as part of this uh, aspiration to offer spiritual insight and spiritual education to support our own growth in Krishna consciousness. So thank you all for joining in. And again, on behalf of everybody who's tuned in, Marge, I, I thoroughly walk away enriched and enlivened uh, with your association and your insights. So thank you. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna. Thank you. It was wonderful to be with you and how you took everything and projected it to a higher level. <laughs> uh, only with your association, Morris. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for it's enriched my own learning today. Thank you. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. We'll be in touch soon. Take care. Hare Krishna. <laughs>